data sheets. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the uh, data sheet on 1N914, which is there at the top. Now diodes fall into different categories. Uh, the two categories that we're looking primarily at is rectifier diodes. Rectifier diodes are usually high current diodes, but they're not designed to operate at a real high frequency. So normally it's around 50 to 60 hertz. Small signal diodes, these guys here are not designed to carry a lot of current, but they can switch real fast. So these guys can operate at a higher frequency. And so we use diodes for a lot of other things besides rectifiers. Rectifiers are just the one things that we cover in this class. So the 914 is what we call a small signal diode. So normally we don't use this as a rectifier. So let's go ahead and open this up because this is well, the, this is the one when you're dealing with the uh, with the diode characteristic lab. Uh, this is the diode that you're going to be using. I don't know what number that is in your lab. But, uh, but you can see the average forward current is rated at the average forward current is rated at 200 milliamps. Guys, we're having class up here. Class, okay. The average uh, the average forward current starts at 200 milliamps. Okay. Uh, the maximum reverse. So this is our breakover voltage. Uh, most books call this PIV. Most data sheets call it VRRM, so you need to learn the different phrases we use for the same thing. Unfortunately, uh, that's there's never really a standard, right? So we tell people, you know, you learn all these phrases and you, then you go to work and the people at work use different phrases from the way you learned it. And of course, what do you have to do? Well, you need to learn, you need to learn the terminology of where you work at. But at least you'll know, oh, okay, so that's what this is. So VRRM, this is a maximum uh, repetitive breakover voltage. So this is not forward bias, right? This is reverse bias. And what usually happens if we break a, a diode over in the reverse direction? Yeah, usually wipes it out. It's either going to open or it's going to short. Either one, or it's going to come leaky, and it's not going to be a good check valve anymore. Yeah, standard diodes, it'll, it'll damage the diode. You understand? Now, these are for standard diodes. These are small signal diodes, and these are for, uh, these are for uh, rectifier diodes. So we don't want to ever break these things over on purpose. Or even not on purpose. Huh? Yeah, over that value. Now we're going to do it on purpose, but we're going to protect it. We're going to show you all this. We're going to take a 914. Part of the lab uh, that most of y'all are working on, part of the lab actually we break over a diode, but we're going to protect it with like a 10 mega ohm. Uh, we're going to take. We're going to protect it with a real, real high resistor. That was Monday. Yeah, we did it Monday. Okay. Oh, yeah, he was here. Yeah, we're not going to. Uh, I don't guess who. I don't guess he was here. I know, but I don't guess he was either. Because the whole class, that whole class decided to do, to go back and not do the meter class. So that's how we roll. So average filtered current, this guy here can do around 200 milliamps, but that's not the peak, I see. Uh, then storage temperatures. Uh, this guy here can handle up to one amp for one second, and he can handle up to four amps for, uh, for one microsecond, and that's forward biased. Are we okay? Everybody okay? Yes or no? So what are the absolute maximum ratings? The absolute maximum ratings are the ratings. If we stay within these ratings, it don't, it don't guarantee operation. It guarantees that it won't be damaged. Now, if I wanted to see how the diode worked, then I would come down and look at the uh, electrical characteristics, which are these guys right here. 
and you can see the VF, the forward voltage drop, VF can be anywhere between 720 millivolts all the way up to 1 volt. That makes sense. A reverse current could be anywhere from 25 nanoamps all the way up to 5 uh, microamps. And that's if we have 75 volts. Now, of course, the higher you get it, so you can actually see that, that slope, right? You understand? So everybody okay? So y'all go ahead and open y'all's lab book. And y'all go into, I don't know what lab number, uh, lab number 31, it's the same. And we're looking at what labs? We're looking at diode characteristics. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to develop this characteristic curve. And we call it, it's, it's referred to as a VI characteristic curve. And so for a diode, uh, the VI characteristic curve is going to look similar to this. So this is V, this is forward bias. And over here, this is the reverse bias. Okay. So what will happen, and then this right here is I. This is the current flow through the diode. So what happens is we come over here and we start off, as soon as we put polarity across this thing, there'll be a little bit of current flow through it because there's a path for current to get through. Y'all understand that? And then when it gets up right around five tenths of a volt, it's going to start coming up and then it's going to go up at an angle. It's not going to be a straight line. Now on this side, when we start reverse biasing, it, we're going to have this leakage current. And this is going to go on up here. It says around 100 volts. This guy's going to break over, and what's going to happen? Because here we're, we're pushing current through a voltage, right? And the voltage is 100 volts, right? At least 100 volts. But you have to understand uh, this 100 volts is an approximation. It's going to be around 100 volts. Usually higher than what it's rated at. Okay. So what y'all gonna do on the first part of the lab, uh, procedure steps one through seven, is you're going to measure, you're gonna measure the VF and you're gonna measure the current and you're gonna set up the VI characteristic curve for this right here. Now, when you get into over on, uh, over on step seven, this is where we're going to do the reverse bias. Now, this sucker breaks over at 100 volts, so these things they have in here is no good at all. So what voltages do they put? 5 volts, 10 volts, and 15 volts, right? Now, see where I'm at. I'm over in table 31-3, right? Is that the same table? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to change that quite a bit because we want this thing to actually break over. Okay. So we're going to change our table to be uh, 30. And then the second one is going to be 60. Then the next one is going to be 90. And then we're going to, we're going to add another one. And this is going to be greater than 100 volts. So we're going to add one more row. What do you mean? Yeah, we're marking those out. Those are gone. Because we can't break this thing over. We don't have, we don't have anything that could even measure this, right? You understand? Another thing we're going to do, so the circuit that we're doing is we're going to come over here and we're going to have a variable power supply. So anytime you see an error through an electronic uh, symbol, it means it's variable. Okay, y'all understand that? And then, of course, we're going to take the negative, and we're going to use, instead of using a, a 1 meg ohm resistor, uh, we're going to use a 10 meg ohm resistor. So what would the color codes be, guy? Or 10 meg ohm? 
so far so good. Huh? No, that'd be that'd be ten ohms. Yeah, so it's good. That's it. That's it. So it's gonna be brown, uh, black, blue. So we're dealing with pretty close to an open, right? Ten mega ohms. Now the problem we have. As this is a 10 mega ohm resistor, and about what's the about what's the resistance of my meter, my digital meter? Now remember, or Monday? Or, yeah, what's the resistance of the meter? No, only on amps. If it was zero on volts, I would be blowing stuff up from now to doomsday, right? But y'all measured the input impedance or resistance of the snap-on meter. What was it? Pretty close to 10 meg, right? Some of y'all was 11, some of y'all was 10. So what happens when I come over here and put my meter, now this is where it comes into play, I no longer, I have a parallel circuit. So if I come over here and put a 10 meg ohm in parallel with a 10 meg ohm, my current is going to come up and split, and my, my is going to see it as a 5 meg ohm resistor, right? You understand? You understand, yes or no? And people don't understand that you just can't slap a meter into a circuit and not affect the circuit. Now, the lower the resistance of the circuit, the less effect the meter has on the circuit. The higher resistance of the circuit, the more effect your meter's going to have. So you get into some high resistance, high impedance circuits like communication circuits and stuff like that, then your meter's definitely going to affect the circuit. So when we calculate the current, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to have a meter, we're going to put it right here. And what we're measuring is we're measuring VR, right, to understand. And then we're going to have another meter, and we're going to have our other meter over here. And what that meter is going to measure is it's going to measure, it's going to measure uh, like VR1 in parallel with what? With my meter. And then we're going to use that to calculate the current. So over here, I'm going to take what? I'm going to take VR across the meter, and I'm going to divide it by 5 mega ohms, and that'll give me the current flow through the diode. And by George, we're going to be able to see current flow because it's going to be small. Everybody okay? And we're going to break this thing over. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the voltage drop across that resistor, and when all of a sudden it starts jumping, then we'll, we'll know that's going to break over. We should expect it to be something above 100 volts. Everybody okay? Everybody okay? Everybody got their safety glasses? Okay, so y'all made y'all's corrections to your lab book. What's that? I'm sitting here looking at my lab book. I mean, here it is right here. I mean, you can look at it if you want to. I've got 30, 60, 90, and over 100. Yeah, I've mean, got it right here. I don't know where you got that from. And we marked out the watt. Yeah, I've got 5. I mean, here it is, Mitchell. You can look at it. I've got it. You believe me? <laughs> That's okay. So, guys, we're going to do this as a class. And, of course, uh, huh? We're not, why are we going to do this as a class? Because we're dealing with 100 votes. You know, anything above 50 votes is considered to be legal, right? You understand? That's right, but you're not going to get shot because I'm going to be doing all the twisting and turning. Y'all are going to be back behind me. Okay, everybody got your safety glasses? And of course, if the people the people that's not here, they just miss out on this section of the lab. But they're not going to be able to do this section because of the high voltage.